Now let's look at associative container. Associative container is typically implemented with binary tree. The key attribute of associative container is it is always sorted. When you insert an item in a binary tree, the item will be inserted in its proper location. And when you remove an item from the tree, the tree will be rearranged so that everything is still in order. The items in the associative container are sorted according to certain criteria. By default, that criteria is operator less than. Because the container is always sorted, some operation doesn't make sense anymore, such as push back or push front. First, let's look at a set. Set has no duplicate items. Here I create a set of integer, then I insert 3, 1, 7. By the end of each insertion, the items in the set is automatically sorted and the insertion always takes logarithmic time regardless of where it is being inserted. Either in the beginning, in the end, or in the middle, it always takes logarithmic insertion time. Then I use the member function find to find the item of 7. This is very fast. It also takes logarithmic time. It is much faster than any of the sequence containers. The sequence containers takes linear time to search. So the logarithmic time searching is the most important feature of associative container. The sequence containers doesn't even have the find member function because it takes too long to find. The insertion function also returns something. It returns a pair of values. The second value is a boolean which indi indicates whether the insertion is successful or not. In this case it's inserting 3 and we, since we already have a 3 in the set and the set doesn't allow duplicate items so the insertion is failed. So ret.second equal to false. The first item of the pair is an iterator that points to either the item being inserted if the insertion is successful or the duplicate item in the set if the insertion is failed. And in this case it will point to 3. Then I insert it 9. This will insert 9 in front of this iterator, right? Wrong. The position where 9 will be inserted cannot be decided by you. It can only be decided by its own value. So 9 will be inserted at the end instead of in front of 3. Then why do we need an iterator parameter for the insert function if that position is not used for insertion? It turns out the iterate parameter is used as a hint to find the location where 9 is to be inserted. So if you can always provide a good hint, then you can reduce the insertion time from logarithmic time to constant time. So at the end, 9 is inserted at the, uh, at the end of the set and it is still pointing to 3. Erase it will remove 3 from the set and we can also remove an item by its value. So erase 7, remove 7 from the set. This kind of erasure also benefited from the logarithmic time searching of associative container. None of the sequence containers provides this kind of erasure. It's too slow. Multiset is just like a set, except that it allows duplicate items. So insertion into a multiset is always successful. Here is an example of multiset. One important thing about set and multiset that you should always remember is the value of the elements cannot be modified. They are read only. So the dereference of an iterator 
is a constant. You cannot assign a value to it. The reason is, if you modify an element in a set or multiset, you may corrupt the data structure. The elements may not be sorted anymore. And that is very bad because it will break the promises that the container has made. Properties number one, logarithmic searching time. Number two, traversing is slow. Set and multi set suffer from the same problem as the list, which is locality. So traversing is slow comparing to vector or even deck. Number three, low random access. Associative containers are always sorted, but sometimes people don't want to sort them according to the value of each element. They want to sort them according to some key. So we have a key and value pair. This is why we have map and multimap. Map and multimap have the same interface as set and multiset, except that each element is a pair of key and value. Map doesn't allow elements with duplicate keys. Here I create a map from char to int. And when I insert an item, I need to create a pair from char to int, and then insert it. I could also use the make pair convenient function. It's convenient because it saves me some typing on the types. The types can be inferred from the parameters. Remember, a class template does not infer parameter types. A function template does. The insert function can also take another parameter of iterator, which serves as a hint of where to insert. The member function find will find an item in a map based on the key. And just like the set, finding an item in a map takes logarithmic time, which is very fast. A pair can be accessed through its members um, first and second. So this is how you pr print out all the elements inside a map. Multimap is just like a map except that it allows duplicate keys. Here I created a multimap from char to int. One important thing about map and multimap is the keys cannot be modified. Here, although my multimap is defined as from char to int, the type of its element is actually a pair of constant char and int. So star it dot first cannot be assigned with a different value. Set, multiset, map, multimap, they are all called associative containers. But what does associative mean? The name associative actually comes from the map, where a value is associated with a key. As for set and multiset, you can think of them as a special kind of map and multimap, where the key of each element is the same as the element's value. This is why they are all called associative containers. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe to my channel so when I post a new video, you will be updated. Or you can go to my channel's homepage and see what I'm offering today. Bye bye.